Hey everybody, welcome to our channel Living in Richmond, Virginia, where we show you exactly what it's like to live, work, eat, and play right here in RVA. We help people from all over the world buy homes here in Richmond, and sometimes our buyers can't be physically present. So in this video, we're going to give you our 11 tips for buying a home virtually, and after that, I'll go over the process from start to finish. So if you're thinking about buying a home virtually, be sure to watch the whole video so that you don't miss a thing. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. I'm Taylor Jefferson, and my wife Sarah and I own and operate Jefferson Grove Real Estate. We've helped tons of families relocate to Richmond. And if you're thinking about doing the same, be sure to download our free Richmond Relocation Guide. It's full of useful information all about Richmond and the surrounding areas. The link is in the comments below and on our banner image. If you haven't done so already, you have to subscribe to our channel because every week we'll be posting new videos all about living in Richmond, including more neighborhood tours, fun things to do in RVA, and lots more coming up. Sarah and I know that there are a lot of moving parts when relocating to a new area. Our favorite scenario is when you move here first and rent for a while before you buy a home. We feel this gives you time to get a good idea of the lay of the land, and it gives you flexibility with finding your next home, because you won't be in as much of a rush. However, we know that this isn't always possible or preferable, so if you think you'll have to go the virtual route, here's our first tip. If you can't make it into Richmond for each showing, at least come to visit Richmond once and let us give you a tour at that time. After we first speak with you, what we typically do is we search through lots of previously sold homes that fit what you're looking for, and we send those to you. Previous sales are a great indicator of what type of house might pop up for sale in the future. Once we send those to you, you tell us which ones are your favorites. Then when you come into town, we give you a tour of the neighborhoods that those are located in, as well as the nearby amenities, or as we call them, the bubbles. This way, if in the future a home pops up in one of those neighborhoods that you like, then all we have to do is focus on the house itself because you already know you like the area. Now, it might sound easy to shop for a home from the comfort of your couch, but it's actually far more difficult and you really need to trust who you're working with because there are lots of ways it can go wrong. When we show homes virtually to buyers across the country, we make sure to tell you all the bad things we notice about the home, not just the good attributes. Since you aren't in the home with us, you can't tell if there's a bad smell throughout, if the floorboards feel spongy, if the house isn't level, and lastly, the proportions of the room don't really translate perfectly from in real life to your screen. We will definitely tell you all of those things, but let's say you're moving to a different area and you can't work with us. Well, if your agent isn't telling you these things during the showings, be sure to at least ask, hey, does the house have a smell? Does the house feel solid? Are there any red flags that you see? Also, if you really like the house, be sure to ask your agent to check out the crawl space to see if there are any obvious issues there as well. I have to give a shout out to our client, Sandor, who was the one that informed us about this next tip. When doing a virtual showing, we recommend using the Google Duo app versus any other video chat apps. Prior to Sandor's recommendation, we were using FaceTime for most of our virtual showings, and there were a large amount of calls that were either lost or they had really laggy connection, which doesn't make for an ideal showing experience. If you have ever tried to view an entire home through the phone during a virtual showing, then you know it's easy to get lost and forget the entire layout by the end of the showing. Getting all the angles and a good feel for the proportions of the room is very difficult. So our next tip is to go back through the home and take a video of it. Now, this is a time-consuming step, and it truly isn't feasible to do for every single home that you see virtually. What Sarah and I do is we ask you if you like it enough to consider an offer. If so, then we take our GoPro back through the home and send you a Google Drive link to the video. This way you can review it, you can pause, and you can re-watch so that you'll get a much better idea about the house's layout and the size. Tip number five plays off the last one. While it isn't possible to do for every single home, if you plan on writing an offer or you think you might, getting a video of the neighborhood and the immediate surrounding area is a pretty good idea. Depending on tree coverage and the weather, we'll take our drone up and share the aerial footage from the neighborhood with you so that you can see what the area around the home looks like. It also helps put into perspective the lot size. If the drone isn't feasible, we'll put the GoPro on our car and drive around a few of the streets by the house. This isn't always necessary if you're already familiar with the neighborhood. But if you aren't working with us and your agent doesn't offer these services, another option is you could always check out the Google Maps Street View. Just keep in mind that those images might not be up to date. As you can imagine, working with virtual relocation clients can be very time consuming. It takes longer to show each house, and if a client likes that house and wants additional video, then that's even more time spent. So tip number six is to work with an agent who has experience helping clients buy homes virtually and has the time to assist you and they aren't spread too thin. Sarah and I only work with a handful of virtual buyers at any given time to make sure that we have enough time to spend with each of them. But don't worry, if you call us and we're fully booked, we do have a backup plan. So still be sure to reach out to us anytime you're thinking about relocating to Richmond. This next tip is something that you need to know up front. If you won't be in town for your closing day and you plan to close remotely, then make sure your settlement agent can accommodate a remote closing. 
You don't want to get the process started with one settlement company just to realize a week before closing you need to either buy a flight to make it into town or switch settlement companies last minute. FYI, Shaheen Law Firm here in Richmond is capable of doing remote closings and they're honestly our go-to attorney anyway. Speaking of closing remotely, our eighth tip is that if you're located in a different time zone, be sure to schedule your remote closing for a time in which your settlement company is still open. If you're in California and buying a home here in RVA, don't choose 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for your closing because if you have any questions about any of the documents that you're signing, you won't be able to ask anyone at the settlement company because they're going to be closed. So be sure to keep time zones in mind when scheduling your closing appointment. Our ninth tip is all about the home inspection. Sarah and I always attend the home inspection with our clients, and if you can't make it into town for the inspection, don't worry. What we'll do is we'll video call you at the end when the inspector goes over all the findings. That way you get to hear the results and ask the inspectors any questions that you have. And let's say you're under contract on a home and you're dying to see what you bought in real life. Then the home inspection is a time and place for doing so. Typically the inspection window is 7 to 14 days after ratification, so you will have to act pretty fast. Let's say you come into town for the inspection and you realize you hate the house. Well, there aren't many outs in the contract. Here in Virginia, the biggest and easiest way out of a contract is if the home is in an HOA. If it is, then you can back out of the contract within three days of receiving what's called the HOA Resale Disclosure Packet, which are all the documents related to the rules and regulations of the HOA for that neighborhood. This is your get out of jail free card. Now, we don't ever want you to write an offer already thinking about how you can back out of it. We want to find you a home that you're stoked about, but be aware of this out just in case you need it. Our last tip is really something that should be a first step regardless if you buy a home virtually or not. Be sure to reach out to a lender before you get too far into the relocation process. The nature of relocating itself can sometimes create situations that are very tricky for getting approved for a loan, especially if there's a job change involved. So speak with the lender and let them know what your move is looking like and see if there are any extra hoops that you have to jump through to get that loan. So those were our tips to help you out when buying a home remotely. In this next part of the video, I'm going to quickly go over what the remote home buying process looks like. First, we'll set you up on an MLS home search portal, and then you let us know when you see a house that you like. We will then schedule the showing, and using the Google Duo app, we'll show you the home virtually. If you like it and you're considering an offer, we'll check out the crawl space and take a video of the whole house for you to review. You'll then let us know whether you want to proceed with an offer or not. If so, we'll discuss market conditions, comps in the neighborhood, and what type of offer you need to submit. Once under contract, we'll schedule your home inspection and you can decide if you want to attend it or not. If you don't plan to be in town for your closing, be sure to tell your settlement company this so that they can arrange a mobile notary to assist you the day of your closing. And lastly, on the day of closing, I'll go to the house and video call you again for the final walkthrough. What I'm doing is making sure that the house is in the same condition as when you put in an offer on it and that no trees or meteors or satellites have fallen on the home because once you sign the dotted line, you own it. I'll also get the keys from the lockbox during the final walkthrough, and I can either overnight them to you or keep them until you make it into town. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about buying a home virtually. Keep in mind that you'll still be doing all the normal home buying things during that time as well, such as submitting documents requested by the lender, filling out any attorney paperwork, scheduling utility transfers, and more. But we will guide you through the process from start to finish, so just leave the details to us. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you liked it, be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment if you have any questions. If you're thinking about moving to Richmond, be sure to hit me up. I can make your move stress-free and easy. I appreciate you being here with me today, and I'll see you next time.